Okay, I'm uh, about halfway through replacing the brakes on this car. This is my Ford Mondeo. It has disc brakes front and rear. Um, so I need to replace all four rotors and all four sets of pads. Um, and I just thought uh, I should make a little quick video, which will be more of a universal one, uh, talking about how to look at and decide if you do in fact need to replace both pads and or rotors. Um, so to do that, um, you'll need some sort of uh, way of uh, measuring it. If you watch mechanics do this sort of thing, uh, you'll notice, or an inspector, um, you'll notice that they tend to just uh, look very quickly at the hardware. Maybe they'll just sort of run their finger over the rotor. They'll have a quick look through the um, alloy at the pads, and they'll make they'll you know they'll make a decision based on experience whether or not something needs replacing. And that's because they're doing it day in day out all the time, and of course they build up the relevant experience. Now, if you're a total amateur and you don't have that experience, then uh, but you nonetheless want to do this sort of job yourself, then I would suggest that you need to fall back on the likes of um, manufacturer specifications. So you sort of do everything by the numbers. Um, so to do that, you'll need to know what the uh, manufacturer specifications are. Um, the car manufacturer will have um, minimum wear numbers for uh, things like the rotors and the brake pads too, although you'll, uh, for things like brake pads, um, very often the specific brake pad manufacturer will have some sort of system for letting you know um, what the minimum thickness is. They'll have some marking on the pad or um, something like that. Um, so to actually carry out the measurements, you'll need something like a, a pair of digital calipers. It doesn't have to be digital, but um, makes it nice and easy if it is. And um, doing that, you'll be able to uh, go ahead and take your measurements. Now, um, you can uh, take measurements through the alloy in a lot of cars. Um, but in, in many cases, it'll be much simpler if you take the wheel off and then you'll have complete access to everything that you uh, need to have access to. So I suggest you do that and then you can uh, get in there and have a look at things. This is the rotor and when it's worn like this, it will have a characteristic silver circle where the, uh, the pads actually wear on it and the rest is likely to be basically rust. Now, you also get that lip at the outside and the worn lines across the surface which I'll come back to in a second. Now if you look at the caliper, um, you'll find the pads, which are basically uh, in contact with the rotor on both sides. And you need to identify the pad material itself, which is the, uh, the layer closest to the rotor. Now, when everything's dirty, it can be hard to see, but um, you can see a line here. Uh, the part inside of that closest to the rotor is the pad itself, and uh, that's what wears down and requires the pad to be replaced. Uh, now here's something you need to know. Most calipers and their pistons are set up in such a way that the piston applies force from the inside. Now the caliper of course reacts, so uh, you do eventually get an even squeeze, so to say. But the piston does nonetheless tend to put the inside pad in contact with the rotor a little bit before the outside. Now what that means is uh, you tend to get higher wear on the inside, uh, on both the pad and the inside rotor face. So when you're checking this out, this stuff, uh, you need to look at the inside specifically, uh, not just the outside, uh, which is easiest. So um, the outside pad might look okay while the inside one is gone. And uh, this applies to the rotor too, at least when you have these vented rotors, which are sort of two solid rotors uh, joined together with um, veins in the middle, like this. Um, the original thickness um, of these uh, rotors is 24 millimeters. And the uh, minimum thickness specified by Ford is uh, 22. Um, which implies a uh, one millimeter of wear on each rotor face. Um, but, and I'm measuring uh, just over 23 millimeters total thickness, but if the inside was wearing down a lot faster than the outside, um, you could get into the situation where a simple measurement 
um, of the total might look within spec, but uh, you know, there's actually much more than that um, one millimeter of wear on the inside face. Now, by the way, a few things uh, about using about using um, measuring calipers on the rotor. Firstly, if the rotor face is badly scarred by lines, that's to say it uh, has some really deep versions of these engraved trenches that are cut out by stones and crap that gets stuck in the pads, um, then you need to take them into account when assessing the rotor, because obviously the measurement is uh, just of the flat upper surface. And secondly, if you have a lot of wear and the lip on the outside is too high, you might not be able to get the calipers in proper contact with the braking surface. Now, in that case, you can work around it by just using something to sort of shim the calipers with, uh, like these sockets that I'm using here. Just zero the calipers with them together like this, and then do the measurement with the shims in place. Now, as to uh, measuring the pads, I found um, the hole depth gauge on my uh, digital calipers to be useful here. Just do it like this. But remember that it's even more important to look at the inside pads. And uh, the other thing is to check both edges of the pads if you can, because pads often end up wearing at an angle unevenly. So it's best to get a measurement of the thinnest bit that you can find uh, while bearing in mind that a uh, severe angle to the wear can indicate other problems with the brake system. Um, there are also some uh, other characteristics of the rotors, like runout and uh, thickness variation, uh, but this covers the basics of looking at your brake wear. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, I'll be doing other videos on actually replacing this stuff.